winter time. Exactly. <laughs> I just have my Christmas shirt on, so it's all right. I like like how we all are like. Mm. <laughs> And we are live. Sweet. Sort of. I mean, we are live, but we're not starting yet. We're not official. It's the pre-show before the pre-show before the pre-show show. <laughs> Do some pre-gaming. Oh, yes. But I have finally did what I said I was going to do. I moved to T. Oh. Now, really? I did. I'm going to be unalcoholed. You're a teetotaler. At least for the moment, yeah. Teetotaling. <laughs> That's good, I think. Um, I mean, it's better for my liver. Since our, our, our number one viewer uh, is a teetotaler herself, I, th I think it's good that we're, uh, you know, showing Fun. solidarity. Yeah, exactly. Nothing wrong with it. You gotta like do what's best for you. Something. Little tea <laughs> pins. All right, I'm gonna sp share this. Recording places. Copy link. Share by Twitter. No, send it WhatsApp. That's a scary idea. Oh, so how's y'all's weeks been? Uh, <clears throat> yeah. I already told you the. Yeah, I mean that's true. That is true. She's yeah. you're having you're having you're having home issues, which no one likes home issues. Well, and we don't own the house; we rent it, so there's that oh. extra added layer. Yeah. Yeah. Because then you're just like, go fix my house. I pay you enough money. <laughs> In his defense, my landlord is actually a really good, really nice guy. It's just he's as frustrated as we are. And this took way too long. This shouldn't have taken a week and a half to do. No, I feel that. What exactly is the problem? Okay. My house was built in 1955. And this area has shifted a lot. So what happened was the house shifted down so far that the, the line that goes out to the street was uneven. And everything was happening to go uphill to get to the city line to get out of the house. And so about every, every six months or so, things would start backing up. And it would cause this weird bubbling and gurgling in our under our tub. And then the toilet would stop flushing right. And yeah. And so every six months, the plumbers would come out and they'd clean out the line. But this time, Paul got, our landlord got, you know, estimates because it needed to be fixed. He's spending, you know, hundreds of dollars every time. So they've been digging up the line and rerouting so that it's up even with the city line. So our whole driveway is dug up. And yeah, it was all very dramatic earlier. Every tap on the house was running. We were running the washing machine, <laughs> flushing the toilet. But Trying to push water through to make sure that it was working? To make sure that it was running through, yeah. Because eventually what would happen is the toilet would stop flushing correctly and running the washing machine would cause the gurgling and bubble up into the tub. And the kitchen would smell like a swamp, like just like a swamp. It was horrible. Oh, so. Joy. Yeah, so they and they weren't listening to what we were trying to tell them about the problem, and so they we finally all got on the same page. Yeah, we, we finally tried everything but your idea. <laughs> now yeah. we're gonna now we're forced to try your idea. Yeah, my landlord actually had me in their video. To, he had me run the washing machine because once it hits the rinse cycle, that's where the hell began, and so he had me in there videotaping on my phone when all the water gets sucked out of the toilet. Because that's what would happen in the rinse cycle. But the problem is this morning when the second rinse cycle hit, I was sitting in the, in the living room and I hear this pop. And I'm like, that sounds like the toilet lid. And it was, it was horrific. It was horrible. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, luckily, the lid was down. So it was, <laughs> it was a contained event. But yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So it seems okay now. Everything's running properly. You, you were very uh, diplomatic. Uh, so you didn't use the term raw sewage in there at all. <laughs> but that is what we're talking about, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it literally vomited up into my toilet. It was the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. 
because I was like opening the lid and I'm like oh my and I went running out to Matt and I'm like oh my god don't go in there but it's all cleaned up now so yep don't like that no no but hopefully we're good to go it is yeah it's my the, of all housing problems plumbing is the worst in my opinion it's just it ruins everything when it goes bad yeah when the uh, power went out and we got no water last year around february like yeah. we just got our water bill we got to see like the funny little like drop in february that was um, we were happy that we filled up our tubs with water and plugged yeah. the tubs so we could at least like bail them out and flush the toilets yeah yeah we didn't lose we didn't lose water but we had to uh boil we lost we lost water because the power to the uh water towers because they kept having to continuously pump water into a water tower to make it work right yeah <laughs> yet that many people using a water tower yeah <laughs> some people water anymore. some people in the outlying areas like in corinth some of my friends they did lose water completely so it was being shipped in from other places but denton's well, at least our house was okay Oh, great. That's, I know, right? I'm so happy I don't have her problem. <laughs> because I brought home that cursed box, I'm telling you. <laughs> we, wanna, we don't want to get into the cursed box until we start the show. Oh, okay, okay yeah. It's there is a cursed box. box for everybody to know. <laughs> Stay tuned. We are live with the cursed box. <laughs> uh, oh my god, there it is behind her. <laughs> that would be kind of hard because there's a wall there but it's always See, possible I thought that actually was it next to you but I could be wrong it looks like a basket or something this yeah that's my book of shadows oh well I mean <laughs> talking oh, of cursed yeah. objects I just I just keep that open it's like it's on my cookbook stand it it's is. fine it's no like wonder your toilet's having problems it's my herb cabinet behind me just like someone just goes in there and sneezes by cap. accident, and a couple of pages <laughs> flip over, some spices fall on it, and now your toilets are cursed. See, I didn't do the cleansing ritual soon enough. That's the problem. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk about that later, though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here I am drinking uh, dietary tea. Is it good? Actually, it is. I mean, I'm not one... I'm not one actually for licorice, but for some odd reason, this is not terrible. Um, licorice tea makes my throat feel weird. Yeah, it, it, it kind of has a weird numbing agent to it. Yeah. Same thing like when you smoke cloves. It's like your whole mouth and <laughs> just kind of feel numb to the fingertips. Yeah. But they're now illegal and they can't have them. I know. Anymore. My goth heart was so upset. I know. And I just found them. I, 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 was only, I only had them for like a year. And I like smoked Aww. them at like three conventions because I had one pack and I had to let them last for like five years. Aww. So then I yeah, had to come I... up with new ways to keep my little, cause I have a little bro uh, a roach thing I carry with me every now and then. And I, <laughs> I just like have the tip of one of them left over in it. Cause I ran out. I'm just like, <laughs> we're done. I can just get the ghost of whatever's left in the filter. Yeah. I think you can still get them over. You can get them from overseas, but there's things involved with that. Yeah. So, yeah. Are we ready to officially go live? Yeah, let's I think, hit the I think we're ready. Yeah. Let me see if I push the right button and make this happen. <laughs> Well, hello! Once again, you have found a Texas Steampunk Connection, broadcasting to you throughout the multiverse, Steamverse, from our various bunkers and airships. With me, as always, is Fax, Gentleman Adventurer! Hello, hello! <laughs> with me is Jack from Steam Chest. Hello! <laughs> and we have with us today, Master Blue Stocking from <laughs> Steampunk Dollhouse Podcast. So, once again, we are here to talk, oh, probably about Steampunk, most likely, because that's what this is about. Thank you for listening to the Texas Steampunk Connection. And here we are. Right. We are. Get down to it. <laughs> to it, to it. Thank Rita for already joining us, our number one listener, viewer, what have you. Awesome. And uh, we are all Thank here. Uh, how's it going? <laughs> oh. Awesome. Oh. <laughs> Dietary tea and cursed toilets. That's where we're at right now. 
But hey, the semester's over and I passed my classes. So congratulations. Congratulations. That's awesome. How long do you get to relax and decompress before you're in it again? January 18th is when I go back. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I get about four weeks in the winter, like three in spring and two in the summer. So that's right. I remember that. That's about, that's about what I was on with college semesters as well. Yeah. Yeah. Just in time and to have my birthday and like a weekend and then straight into it. Pretty much. And since I'm a graduate assistant, I can't work when teachers aren't working. So I'm not yeah. working either. Yeah. So it's, you know, Peace for four weeks. <laughs> I get like a week off from work because the way I like finagled my time off and the fact I didn't have to go to Steampunk November. So I'm like, I got two extra days I'm going to throw in on this that I didn't have previous. So I'm looking forward to my week in three days. <laughs> hey, man, I'm man, not allowed miss... to work. I'm physically, they, they will not allow us to graduate yeah. assistants to work when the teachers aren't there. So it, it makes sense. But yeah. I, what I was really getting to with that whole thing was the fact that Sorry. I do remember. No, you're fine. I do remember like the four weeks off and then just dive into it again for like four months. Yeah. And then I usually took one semester off in, in the summer session and it took a second and they either did, then I would do a summer session. So it either, August or, or uh, Jan July. So I had like a month off again and then just like really killed myself before the next semester. Yeah, I didn't take summer. I didn't do summers in my undergrad or my master's, but if I want to finish my PhD before I'm 50, I had to do summer courses. So yeah, it's just We're here been for continuous. you. <laughs> I'm so glad all of that is behind me. I mean, I, I never went to graduate school like you're doing, uh, but I still have nightmares. I do too. <laughs> I have horror stories. I worked on campus too. So I, I got there at six in the morning. And if I wasn't going to a class, I was working the IT desk. So Ooh, yeah. Dang. And it was always the call the, the help desk. So I got to help everyone from the janitor to the provost, the student who has no idea how to. I was the first guy who when someone walked up with a Blackberry and set it on my desk going, can I get email on this? It's like, you probably can, but why would you want to? <laughs> and, and then we're still I was, asking ourselves that question today. Yeah, I know. And now we don't even use, like, why do we even call these phones anymore? We They're just not. Them. Yeah. They are literally portals from social media straight to our brain. Yep. Pretty much. We are all a part wallet. of the system. It's my ass mounted <laughs> computer. Yeah, yeah. This thing hurts my wallet more than than anything else in the in, in existence. Hey, I didn't know that existed. I just bought it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yep. Impulse uh, shopping has grown out of control. What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <sighs> uh, let's see. Let's let's start the the podcast within a podcast. As far as right. I like to say, what are we drinking tonight? And I know Jack's got something special. Oh, yes, it is apparently a blend of uh, star anise, licorice, lemon, and hops. Apparently, is a big deal in this. It's actually not bad. It's the uh, so it's it's an absinthe. You're drinking absinthe tonight? No, it's it's a tea. It's, it's not even alcoholic. It's just, <laughs> what? It's it's all the horrible flavors without any of the fun. <laughs> it, you said it's dietary tea, right? Yeah, it's 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 a detox it's a diuretic. Tea. Yeah, yeah, it's, and yeah, so, it's gonna make yeah. Yeah, it, it was it's the only thing I had, like. I just randomly grabbed in my grab bag and I pulled out the the, the crappy black licorice <laughs> jelly bean, <laughs> and since it was in the dark, I'm just like shoved it in my mouth and started chewing, going, "Oh God, I made a mistake." <laughs> but uh except in this case i just threw it in my cup and hit the, the curb thing for 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 hot water and then i smelled it as it was steeping and i'm like oh dear lord it was what i thought it was that that's oh god i have to drink it now <laughs> next time we will hopefully spin the roulette of tea again and come out better <laughs> Oh man, I actually want to get like a little wheel now right over here. Just spin it right. and see what terrible things Jack has to drink. All right, Blue uh, Stocking. Uh, what have you got? Uh, my usual apothic. Yeah. Oh. I'm a simple thinking, girl. You should you should you should turn you should like, fortify it with some with something. With some licorice. <laughs> I, I was actually thinking like 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 
what do you, what do you usually fortify, fortify wine with? Is it like, um, a, like mold wine? Um, I mean, ports, isn't it like? Oh, fortify. Yeah, I don't Coca-Cola. know. Coca-Cola. I thought it was like bourbon <laughs> or um, port and sherry are yeah, really cherries. sweet so, and strong, but I can't remember what's in them. But you, that, you can't make one in a glass, right? You have to. No, it's the dis, it's the yeah. Distilling I mean, process. If you want to go through, if you want to go uh, through the, the poor man's, I have two bottles. I'm going to pour them together. Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and you can make in some European countries, and I think South America, to mix red wine and Coca Cola. Oh. That was not just a joke. Although I've huh. never even wanted to try that. No, I I'll pass. Of that. <laughs> but the suggestion I wonder if it noted. tastes like some sort of like random debauched black cherry coca-cola because if that's the case then i may have to try this 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 terrible concoction idea i mean i've heard of a red wine spritzer using you know seltzer water and red wine but not coca-cola i'm not that gives me the the the, the laverne and shirley milk and pepsi vibes oh yeah yeah, yeah the, the, the purple the purple cow it was milk and grape juice put together Oh, I just oh, think some of this stuff gross. has come up with in the eighties, just to, just to torment bored children. children. It was yeah. bored latchkey children mixing things together in their kitchen. Like, what does mom have in the refrigerator? <laughs> I bet you won't drink this, my little brother. Yep. <laughs> I call it the purple cow. Oh, is this oh. actually a thing? Yeah. That's horrible. <laughs> Half the time, I think God. that was what my brother was doing to me, but we were bored. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the things you come up with when you're bored. The horrible inventions you create. Oh, I'm sure Eddie. there are legitimate red wine cocktails other than just mixing it with uh, seltzer. But I don't know any. I yeah, have to look I just, that up. Well, and especially with Ice. red wine. With the fla- yeah. Well, yeah, but with the flavors in red wine, I can't imagine. It's already so strong that I can't imagine mixing it with something else. Hmm. Yeah, I can see that. I don't know, but I'm sure somebody has done it. I mean, I mean, they're bartenders. That's their job to find new and interesting ways to serve weird drinks, liquors. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Yeah. Eddie Hall over here says something about he feels the same way about kabacha, which is uh, well, like kombucha. Is it kombucha? I think he meant kombucha. Okay. Oh, I tried that once. That was horrible. I did not like it. I is learned in a YouTube video that kombucha is a, originally a Japanese word, but it doesn't mean the thing that we drink. No. Hmm. No. The Japanese are, would refer to that as a um, mushroom tea, which they have. Yeah. But yeah. kombucha Delicious. is something totally different. It's not really surprising. Cultural appropriation doesn't always <laughs> translate very well. That is true. <laughs> And Rita oh, says, wine and Coke sound disgusting. Yes, yes, I agree. yes it does. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to try that. Oh, what, okay. And Thax, what are you drinking? Well, my wife Erica found something very interesting that I'm drinking. Peek! Oh. <laughs> She's like, dive out of the way! I'm not in punk garb. She found two beers called <gasps> cookies, cookies and cream, cream. what huh. do you pour them together uh we didn't uh i don't think that'd be a good <laughs> idea but they're brewed and canned by uh martin house brewing company in fort worth oh um tonight she is having the cookie dough stout which is the cookies and i am having a rich cream ale which is cream well tell us how they are yeah and uh We've tasted both of them. They, they, uh, there's a stout, there's mm-hmm. the ale. They're both sweet. They, they oh. definitely have a, a sweet aroma and flavor. Um, I think the, uh, cream is much the cream ale is going to have like those, uh, milk, uh, what are they called? Uh, lactic acid. yeah, the lactose. That's put oh, in like, okay. uh, cream ales and that sort of thing. Hmm. And uh, so you get a, a, a sweet, creamier consistency to the beer. Interesting. And uh, it's a strange balance. 
<laughs> it's, it's it's definitely sweet and still has that aley flavor. Not very hoppy, because uh, I think that would that would be a bad choice. Be it's not bad. Yeah. I like it. Uh, it's just one of those things that says like, "Hey, Earl, look what I figured out how to do. Let's taste some cookies. <laughs> Go try it." But to be it's honest, I preferred the 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 uh, cookie dough stout that that Erica is drinking uh, more. So I like stouts. Who doesn't? And it's it's winter, and it's that sort of time of year, and it, it's very creamy and sweet and desserty. Mm. Uh, so, but either of those I thought were really uh, interesting, worth worth showing off. That is cool. I have to look, have to look that. for that. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> and uh, she found them. Was it H E B? Yeah, in the. In the buy one, the one off section. Okay. So we didn't have to buy like a whole six pack of each one or anything. Oh, that's cool. Oh, they come in four packs? Uh -huh. So they're expensive, huh? For, yeah, like four bucks. <laughs> well, <laughs> if you're feeling wealthy. <clears throat> All uh, right. All right. Well, now it's time to segue into the actual podcast of our podcast. <laughs> the podcast part of the podcast? <laughs> has everyone done a little bit of uh, research or has it have anything? I mean, you're excused if you haven't. I mean, I'm not going to get on to you, uh, you down there. but I, I do, but it was a challenge. Things seem, steampunk-wise, a, a little bit slow right now. I found That's something awesome. fairly interesting, and it fits with the, uh, the holiday spirit. Oh, good. All right. Oh, yeah. It's great. Well, then go first. All right. It is the 2021 Cosmic Horror Holiday Gift Guide. <laughs> okay. wow. I know. I was like, this pops up now on my Google feed, so I'm just like, oh, Google knows me now finally. Apparently. Uh, so it reads off kind of like, uh, like a creature from beyond our understanding. The darkest of holidays have arrived, Black Friday. But all is not lost. I'm delighted to introduce my eighth annual list of lists for year 2021. In it, you'll find a plethora of paraphernalia. For the weird science fiction fanatic, cosmic horror connoisseur, or mythos maniac in your life. As for our previous years, I've worked to assemble a list of extra uh, exceptional items for all ages and budgets. And he goes on a little bit. He pontificates. But one of the first things he finds is a book. It's called Beneath the Rising by Premi Muhammad. And apparently it is a uh, new clean energy source might sound perfect until it awakens an ancient evil uh, set on subjecting humanity. Now it's up to the inventor and technological genius, Johnny Chambers and her pal, Nick to stop it from coming of age in the in this cosmic horror tale. I cannot speak. My mouth is numb. It's terrible. I should just throw this tea out. Why do I even still have it? I don't know. Except to t torture yeah. myself. <laughs> And so another book he's got here is called The Beauty. And it's, I wish I could. It's going to be so jank. Let's see if I can do this. No, stop. So this is the front page of this of this book. It, oh, man, that's terrible. Yeah. OK. So anyway, it's supposed to be like a flower. It's like a blossoming face. But uh, the synopsis on this is or synopsis on this is a darkly twisted yet thought provoking heart of mankind story about our shared history, the uh, formation of myth and stories we tell while the narrative hints at an allegory. It's not burdensome and it's a small but powerful novel that is very much worth your time. So, I mean, you can look up this list yourself. You just got to type in uh, 21, uh, 2021 cosmic horror holiday gift guide, but there was just, a bunch of books on it and a lot of them sound very good some of them are very much horror but uh like children of the fang and other genealogies like that already piques my my interest the sweet dreams of cthulhu it looks like a kid's book actually in this house at riley cthulhu can't sleep so it's up to his pal howard to help him get back to the land of slumber in his adorable little board book of tiny cosmic horror enthusiasts in your life. It is a child's book. <laughs> nice. Uh, and then there's some more that sound really, uh, that look really pretty cool, like the Hounds of Tindalos. It's obviously um, a psychological horror. 
he's got Ring Shout on there by Peter Jelly Clark. Ring Shout is amazing. Is it? We read that. Uh, yeah, that we read that in one of my narrative lit classes. Um, a natural narrative or multicultural lit in spring. Yeah, Peter Jelly Clark's work is incredible. And so, yeah, Ring Shout is definitely worth your time. Sweet. Yeah. Thank you for bringing up this wonderful visual. I didn't even think about <laughs> technology. I'm so far behind today. It's the tea, I swear. <laughs> But no, I found this. I found this list, and I have been enthusiastic. I've added some of this to my, uh, except that one. I don't think I can afford that book. That's a little expensive. Oh my <laughs> lord! <laughs> <laughs> one copy available. Oh, it's sold by A Books. Then how old is it? Because that's usually A Books is usually old or used. Yeah. That, that, that title sounded very familiar to me. Sounds of yeah. I don't huh. know why. Let's see. It has a Wikipedia page. The author inscribed this limited and softly worn edition on the front free end paper into American writer and editor Richard F. Hughes. That's why. It's, yeah, but an author, even an author's signature isn't worth that much. How old is the book? I, I click on it, I guess. Uh, Sorry, I'm just fascinated by the fact that it's $1,000. Published Okay. Uh, Weird Tales. Okay. Now I want this book even more. <laughs> yeah, if it's that old and it's signed, then I can see that. And if it's the mm -hmm. only copy that you can get, yeah, I can see that. I just want to like make it an audio book and just make sure everyone can have it because it's got to be hidden near the end of its uh, <laughs> its uh, trademarked ism, unless it gets really okay. I found one published in 1978 that's going for 19 dollars plus shipping <laughs> on eBay. Okay. okay. I think we'll so. be all right. You don't. <laughs> you don't have to buy the thousand dollars. I was already getting my my piracy goggles on. The thousand dollars first out. edition. <laughs> if you're going to do a book, do it right. I mean, come on. Great googly moogly. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they oh. also list music and stuff in this yes. list. Yes. Yes. Yeah, cool. That was one that reason. Is. I was like, I also am looking at this for Steam Chest because I've kind of need some if you or a loved one have anyone who wants to be in steam chest for music please send them to my way and don't listen to the hound downstairs barking i know he's just you know, whatever but i need music for steam chest so hit me up Ooh, they even have clothes wow that's yeah. cool i'm gonna need to spend some time with that <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad i made a hit this has made me happy well done yeah, look you can get a cthulhu oh. A Cthulhu a great hoodie baby, baby thing. Sweater. That's amazing. The Elder Party label pen. Lapel pen. <laughs> I didn't scroll down enough. Tentacle uh, cliff cuff flanks. Oh. Reanimator flannel. That is amazing. <laughs> I haven't watched that movie it's in decades. Just, oh, it's literally just green flannel. I love it. Reanimator <laughs> flannel. It's better. It's not just lumberjack. It's reanimated lumberjack. Cthulhu hoodie pajamas. Yep. <laughs> Wow. And games. Digital. Huh. Nice. This, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I posted the link earlier. Housewares? Yep. Perfume, perfume? perfume oil. <laughs> the perfume oil. That's a uh, black <gasps> phoenix. Stockings. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Store handle? You can get that on eBay. Yeah. I just people. replaced my front door handle this weekend oh, and i paid that much too now, now but it is not as cool as that what you do is you return it <laughs> take it out the door and send it back oh. like Miss it. Oh, what's this what was this miskatonic oh. university oh. nice get their tote bag because that's what you want <laughs> really i just want a cheap degree i know <laughs> Well, you're going to get the degree and a whole lot more if you go there. Yeah, you'll get the tote bag. <laughs> Wooey! Ah, and they're even in an open call for unutterable cosmic horror items. <laughs> oh, he's been doing this for a while. Yeah, 2014. There's a couple of lists. I don't know how I never found this before. Huh. And it, I, I hadn't either. And it pops up <laughs> on my Google News page. And I had to read it because obviously 
You can't just start Cosmic something off as a holiday horror cosmic gift guide without me catching without me going, What? <laughs> Even HP Lovecraft wears his mask. And a yeah. setting form, apparently. This is fun. <laughs> Very We're not cool. even halfway through this web page, so I, no. We this is the, the 2000, we got the 2020 Cosmic Horror Holiday. This is going to need some time to go through. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We could have an entire episode on past years of this man's work. <laughs> Good oh, showing. Well Good done. <laughs> wow. Uh, <sighs> I don't want to follow that. That was that was really good. <laughs> That's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. Good night. <laughs> Done. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah, mine's not nearly that, that exciting. <laughs> I'm sorry. I did not mean to bring something of such caliber to the group. <laughs> I was searching for step two. It's a little thin on the on the ground right now. I know. Speaking of something thin on the ground, um, Blue Stocking, I understand you found uh, something on the ground in your neighborhood. Fun. That I would okay. have so many questions about. Yes. Okay. This actually ties into the whole plumbing thing because what? I wasn't okay, because I wasn't able to park in my driveway because they dug it up right. Oh. So I had to park on the street. And because oh. there's so many you can only park on one side of the street on my street. So there's that you know, the cars are lined up. So I was parked on the other side of the street. And so that the picture, that first picture that I posted on Facebook, that was taken from my car because I got into my car. I'm like, whoa. So I'm getting out my phone to take a picture of it. So, yeah, that's that's how I saw it. It was about four houses down from mine because me and Matt, we went up there at 630 that night. And we were running down the because the handles are broken off. So we couldn't oh. pick it up. Yeah, we were holding it by the bottom. <laughs> So I was scooting backward down the sidewalk, starting, and we ran through the house with it to put it on the porch. <laughs> so yeah, wait, it could be cursed. We don't want to drop any ghosts in the house. We ran as fast as we could to get it back out of the house, but we were just like looking around to make sure nobody was was watching us as we were. <laughs> Quick, we're gonna steal this thing that obviously no one wants. They put on the side of the street. <laughs> Two middle aged weirdos running down the sidewalk with them cursed hey, box if someone ever says what are you doing you're like it's a box you just keep going no one's gonna no one's gonna question you but yeah we there was no way we were gonna put it in the house because it's not besides the curse the possible curse are you are you posting the pictures of it i'm trying to you're that, trying to. dimensionally disturbing uh, me now yeah that, there's too much going on there oh god now i'm on the screen <laughs> that's not what i wanted <laughs> no it's not <laughs> You there? You there? Oh, okay. Ha -ha. There's the picture. That's the inside of it. Yeah, when we got it out to the porch and we opened it up. But no, go away. Stop. You don't want to print it. Okay. <laughs> Good lord. Oh. Yeah. So yeah. you found this decrepit <laughs> steel framed wooden crate. It's like an old steamer trunk. Yeah, that's great. But you can tell. It was fabric. I mean, it's the fabric is still clinging to it, like you know, yeah, moldy and and falling off. Ghosts but still, under ruse. still in there, <laughs> like a burial shroud. It needs to be, you know, cleaned. But um, Matt looked Matt at it real good, good the, next good the next, next morning, morning, and it's the wood's not in good shape, and obviously we'd have to strip all the canvas off. So he's telling me that the rivets are can are savable, but everything else is going to need. Like we're gonna, we're gonna strip, strip out the whole inside of it, so it's a project for him. And it's got a little tag in the bottom. <laughs> yeah, it they says probably Saturday Market. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, that is my cursed box that we were running down the street in the dark. This was cool enough to buy, and then left it on the sidewalk, and then had second thoughts and dumped it. <laughs> And like, I brought why it do we have this terrible box? I don't know, honey. I thought it was a great idea at the time. <laughs> it looks cool no. from the outside. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? Nobody noticed when I posted this picture. If you look in the back right corner, you can see our plastic skeleton in the corner. <laughs> Nobody noticed that. Uh, oh, see yep. it back there, his little torso? <laughs> and nobody noticed that. I don't know how, but yeah, You're he's just like, hanging on the porch. Just like, here's my, here's my cursed box. Don't mind the skeleton in the back. <laughs> so yes, that was my my um, day before trash day find. 
Nice. Congratulations. That was a fantastic yeah. find. It just it has so much potential. Yeah, that's, that was yeah, yeah. what I, the picture I took from my car. Oh. And look, a cursed chair, too. We left the chair there. Of course, it's cursed. We can only handle so much. We already had enough going on. <sighs> what I assume must have been leather handle yep. grips. Yeah, here, they're completely yeah, and when, off. Yeah, you yeah, and when you do. open it, it doesn't stay open. That's why in that one picture you can see some legs next to it because Matt's holding the lid open. Because if you try to, it'll just flop right back. So yeah, yeah. It's, instead of putting new leather handles on it, you need to put like those those rods that you carry the uh, the, the Ark of the Covenant. With. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely i don't know what he's gonna do with it but that's the project so <laughs> oh. as someone who's been trying to build a, a, an actual treasure chest for a long time it was actually my plan was to build my computer into it and have like a screen in the lid when you open it and have like crushed velvet red for like the, the keyboard and the mouse and the start button was going to have like a flip open with a key to actually turn the thing on it was a, it was a convention piece i was going to take with me why I would want to uh, now I understand why I would never want to do that because this thing was already heavy and I just got the wood part down. I haven't even stained yep. it yet. And it's <laughs> it's older than my child and it now sits next to my bed and stares at me at night. Like, when are you going to finish me? So you are familiar with the cursed box. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I am. I built my own even. I'm just like, it just sits there. All the rage and frustration is seeping into it as it sits next to your bed. Every I, I mean, I still stick all my cool stuff in it. Like, it's, it's still a good box. And I, uh -huh. I even was able to source, oddly enough, on eBay. I wanted some really big, like, handle things. I wanted, like, really big rings or something on the sides to pick it up with. What I ended up finding were apparently, I don't know how this happened, but apparently only two out of a pair of six for a, um, for lifting up a, um, why is the word now escaping me? Um, a casket. They're, they're casket handles. Oh, yeah. Okay. But only two wow. of them. So I bought them for $11 a piece. And now I got casket handles I want to still mount to the sides of this thing. And they're big metal bits. They're great. They like what, handle a lot of weight to them. So whenever I get that thing done, you know, I will show it on here. But uh, at the moment, it's, I don't know, it's in my back holding, holding my old jeans and uh, like <laughs> half empty bottles of rum and some more detritus and probably like uh, old books. And it's the, it's the box that was supposed to be the cool box, but it ended up being halfway a packing box. So it's just <laughs> whatever can fit in, close the lid and lock it. <sighs> I'm full of sweat and frustration with this <laughs> half empty bottles of rum. What? <laughs> I know the rum, the rum is technically not gone because I can't, I can't drink it because it's locked, but can you I, not get it open? The, the key is around. Oh, so it's, so it's kind of like Schrodinger's box, you know, with a cat. There is, there is rum, but there also isn't rum. Okay. So you never did what you were going to do with it and you can't even do what you want to do with it because it's locked. I mean, I can get it unlocked. I, I, I have the, the picks to get it open. It's just a lot of work. Because <laughs> it's a really nice lock that I put on it. Because I'm just like, I don't want to lose this lock. Click. But you lost the I'm key. I'm going to keep this key. I'm going to put it over here instead of putting it on my key ring like I should have. So it's in like four boxes. I know it's in one of my four boxes. I just got to go go look through the other boxes to find the key to open up my treasure chest. Now it's starting to sound like a freaking level from Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go over here, beat the crap out of those dudes. Hopefully, one of them has a key. Go over here. It's in one of these jars. Of shot. This is what I happens did. when you get distracted by the side quests. Yeah, yeah. It's you side never quest. get back to it. <laughs> I'm never gonna open this chest. I just have. It's like a chest that sits in your inventory. You can never do anything with or get the thing out of. <laughs> I've got like six lockboxes like that in my for my Warcraft characters that I've never uh, gotten open. So. <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> <sighs> okay, right, I'm physically tired from this. <laughs> Good story. Was that your homework? Or or was there something else? Uh, actually, I was going to mention um, Laura Myers. Uh, her Kickstarter was successful. <gasps> yeah! And it was like, a, yeah, because I was watching it after our, epi after our episode. The numbers started, because I went into 
uh, pledge. And then the numbers started shooting up. So, yeah, she is good to go. And I think she's doing the stretch goals now. So, yeah, it's, it's it's over. So is it she completely didn't reach over? the stretch goals. She yeah. didn't, okay. I well, mean, she there was like mark, though. three or four days left when we had our show. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> so it was Yeah, um, she still had a ways to, to go, though. But, I mean, she made ten, she ended up topping out at 10,382. And I think her stretch, yeah. first stretch goal was at 11. Yeah. She could still decide to do it, which would be cool, but <laughs> she doesn't have to. I want to on mean, Victorian panties, or maybe she can make a second book. Well, I mean, you know, depending on how I know that was what Jack was looking for. I think she's still going to, yeah, some of the emails that I saw, she was sending out pictures with that. So, yeah, I mean, it's, she's, she's good to go. Uh, we'll be getting our books, hopefully, in April. I mean, most of mine are still locked in my box. I can't get to them. <laughs> Your books or your panties? Or your underwear. <laughs> <laughs> I said both. Both. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's what I was going to talk about. And then I was, I know y'all talked about this last year, but I was going to bring up Jingle Jangle again since it's the season for it. I was too. Oh, well, then you <laughs> that, go ahead. That's not my, that's not my homework, uh, but yeah, we I needed got, to bring I, it up. Yeah, I wanted to bring up Jingle Jangle. Everybody watch it. I watched it like three times last Christmas. It's beautiful it's funny it's yeah, just i think we've also watched it like three times yeah it's just a feast for the eyes it's incredible it yeah uh it's so beautiful so yeah everybody go watch jingle jangle for your christmas and yeah. that's it just uh astounds me that last year at this time we had tons of things to talk about mm-hmm. <laughs> jingle jangle came out uh, like we just have to cram the, it in the irregulars had just come out yeah yeah which was a fun show mm-hmm. that died after the first season netflix does Uh, that yeah they do that but enola holmes is getting a second season that's coming out or they're filming that right now did you not like that one i I love that one what's taking so long come on Uh, henry cavill and covid well and henry cavill had to do the witcher (laughs) and then yeah so yeah see see now witcher give me give me me. (gasps) Uh, i didn't like the witcher i couldn't get into it i tried it's kind of hard to I mean, he's very pretty, but I the just... first after the first couple of episodes, it gets a lot better. Like if for someone who like who wants more of the story, you it know is what? There. Though, when someone tells me you gotta watch this many episodes and then you're really gonna get into it, I'm like, I don't. No, know. here's what I tell most people: <laughs> if you think you're not gonna like it, you don't like the first episode, skip to about halfway through the season and try it again. Like literally, I don't think I would have watched Farscape if I watched the first episode. But we caught it on this first of the second season because they were airing it. I mean, I didn't have sci-fi, so it was airing on U- at USA or something. And we got to watch the like a two-parter, and we were just hooked on that part. And after that, we loved it. But it, I think it. I think at a certain point, there is a time period where you kind of have to like watch it for the characters and not the plot. And if you enjoy that part, then you can actually go back and enjoy what they were trying to do at the beginning. Um, you, you kind of have to go and watch the whole season twice. I know that that is not <laughs> that, that that is not a, a selling point for you, Blue Stocking. But <laughs> stuff is out of order, and it's it's hard to follow. There's um, just there's so many TV shows on now that I feel like my time is limited. So like if I and I mean sometimes I do like Mad Men started slow, but I ended up loving that show. Yeah, you know it's just. Now there's so much that it's easy you know, to like I... get lost in it. Like Dexter's back. Yeah. Uh, the expanse season six is coming. Oh, I know why. Right. I am looking forward to. I think I'm, I'm two seasons behind in this. Oh. How? How are you two seasons behind? <laughs> there's I so many things. Take so the time. That... There's so much. There's so oh, much. I you guys did remind me. Uh, do you remember? Uh, Star Trek The Next Generation, the first episode. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, Farpoint Station. Yep, it's a with no beer. that show continued. Yeah, <laughs> that, episode yeah, that was good. a terrible episode. Like, that was like, that's what I'm saying. Don't watch the first episode sometimes because they're utterly garbage, unless yes. it's Firefly, which said you just have to watch all of the season at once. Don't stop, just hit the play button and you don't leave. You tie the person up you want to show that show to and you make them watch it. You make them, you know, like. It's it's you know it's it's history at this point. Yeah, but 
back in the 80s, sticking with something was a lot easier because there wasn't a whole lot of That's true. Yeah. <laughs> you know what else is funny? I didn't think of this until it was pointed out to me the other day. Um, telling people you had to go home to watch your show was considered oh, yeah. a normal thing. Yeah, if you didn't catch an episode, you had to wait. Yeah, until you, the were, summer you were screwed and you until it, it was replay. Yeah, or you, or unless you, because I, I watched all my children and Days of Our Lives, so I had the t the recorder set up every day. I would come home from school and watch the tape. So yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, if you weren't there right at it, because uh, I watched Twin Peaks, but I didn't, actually didn't start watching it until like the third episode when I was walking through the room and my parents were watching. I'm like, this looks interesting. So the first two episodes I didn't see for like. 10 years until or until they came out on you know video yeah uh, yeah and it, you missed that, it you missed it <laughs> and sometimes sometimes you'll find someone on the internet who has recorded it for you <laughs> and like or or now if you 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 had that one moment i know this is completely not steampunk but i sat there going there was an opening of home of home improvement where he's laying on the floor and like the camera's like slowly panning upwards. Like he's, and you notice he's like laying on the floor splayed out. And he says something along the lines of like, you know, there's those times when you're just lying on the floor waiting for the paramedics to arrive. When a couple of things come to your mind, like, gee, I need to respack all that ceiling. And I didn't know electricity could throw you so far. I, I remember that so vividly. Well, I found out that YouTube has all of them on there, and I was just going through every season for the first 30 <laughs> seconds, finding that episode so I could watch it. You know, back in the day, we had a guest who has a real-life story of that exact thing. Oh, no! He, he, when you say you electrocuted yourself, that, that implies that you died. So, he did not technically electrocute himself but he, he uh, die <laughs> he had electricity run through his body and his heart stopped oh damn and oh. he could feel the energy leaving his body and the only thing he could think of was to run really fast in one direction and he slammed against the wall and hit the ground that was enough to snap his heart to start working again and was he woke he up stim? on the floor. <laughs> Holy. Holy. That's horrible. He had to live so he could be a guest on our show. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Speaking of, I, I've also run into another guy who um, worked as a, he worked with a clock repair person. And there's a part of the clock you do not open. And it's this box. It looks like a mystery box. It weighs a ton but, uh, so you immediately want to open it. <laughs> yeah. And so he's just like, whatever. And he opens it. Well, it's the spring for the entire watch and clock. And it, it is a grandfather clock spring. It's big. Well, they don't just come out like like tape. Like you'd think like like, like if you were spitting out like, um, like measuring tape or something. Because it comes out the middle in a spiral like this. Well, they went like this across his forehead and just opened his entire head and wrapped around as it went. And basically just laid open his entire scalp to the bone. Oh my. And so he's got this scar. It starts on his cheek and runs all the way over his nose and like all the way around his head like that. And he's like, it's the most steampunk thing I've ever, like, anybody's ever done. It's like, I nearly died to a clock spring. Yes. Don't open don't the box. Open the, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't open, open the, the box because if it was literally that box, much further that. over, it would have gone, it just the, the spirally yeah. bit would have gone straight through his eye. Yeah, and then just scrambled dangerous. his brain with like 32 feet of this stuff. And also it should be said, it's not like you're going to get that spring back in there. No, that was not put in there by humans. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there's actually people to talk to. If you ever want to open those, I can get you in contact with them. Other than that, just don't touch them. They're not worth it. There's our, there's our steam up PSA for the day. <laughs> well, now I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to go find one. <laughs> I don't think you're going to need AirPods this Christmas. We're going to need another blue stocking. <laughs> exactly. See, Matt just said, now he looks like a Cenobite. That was my first thought. Oh, <laughs> that, yep. that sounds like something out of Hellraiser. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I don't know. I think, I think Tax just said something that's going to stick with us for a long time. <laughs> we're gonna, I think we're going to need a new blue stocking. Yeah. <laughs> 
I've survived many things, believe me. I'm not uh, that easy to kill. <laughs> All right, Sax. Okay, I've got, I've got a thing. Uh, interesting that Jack had uh, earlier asked for anybody with musical talent that he could put into his uh, Steam chest. I, I don't think this is going to be the one, but... Um, oh, got my hopes up. That's an intro. Sorry. Let's see if I can do this. Um, Abney Park. Oh, yeah. Uh, you, you know them? Oh, perhaps? yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. They have a new uh, album out that they just uh, released for Christmas. Is they it have a Christmas new Christmas music? album? It they have is another... a Christmas album. It is Abney Park's new Christmas concert and album. They had a Kickstarter uh, to try to raise money for their, their concert. The concert's passed now. Uh, the Kickstarter uh, made its money. But the album is out. Nice. I haven't heard it. But oh. I just saw the, the article and I'm like, oh, that's fancy. Fancy? I'm going to have to check this out. I may give them a call. And uh, I don't know about you guys. I've seen Abney Park a few times. Mm -hmm. uh, they came to Houston uh, for a comic con some time ago that we went to see and we got to like sit in with them in one of those panel discussions um, and uh, they're pretty cool they're pretty cool uh, you just go to abneypark.com they've got some of their, their videos listed there and uh, you can buy their albums you can buy the new Christmas album there or if you're feeling like you can't afford it this is i thought the most awesome thing they have posted their their new album on oh, youtube oh interesting for those of us who are feeling the pinch this christmas but still really want to hear this new work that they've got uh, nice see if you can't afford it or you want to support Abney park to buy an album, here's here it is for free. I thought that was just I like that. Super That's nice. cool of them. Uh, so yeah, check that out. I'll of course be linking that as well. Let's see. Ah, there we go. Very cool. Very yeah. awesome. That was my report. Yep. Love it. So we have music. We had cursed boxes. <laughs> My bad tea. <laughs> and some random weird, weird Victorian horror Christmas list. We were all over the place tonight. I good know. Word. It was great. It was a good one. Have one you been for the ages. Christmas shopping? No. Kind of. Mostly. I, I think I finished writing out my list for my friends and family. <laughs> My family is very big on lists, and so I've ah. been tormented about getting a list out. And I'm just like, I, I, what, how, it, it starts with A. It's alcohol. It's lots of it. It's not that hard. So like a total wine gift certificate would work? I mean, like a liquor store gift certificate. Just or just whatever you find out back behind a bar that they're throwing out. I mean, you know. Whatever hooch you're, you know, you at the end of the night, in a coffee take the, maker and a that rag they've been bus mopping somewhere. up the, you squeeze <laughs> all the, it out. All the yeah, half empty yeah. glasses. Just... Yeah, give me, give me some hobo hooch. <laughs> okay with this. <laughs> I just started shopping yesterday. Uh, I feel because right. it's more fun than going than, than working. Yes, it really Thanks. is. Yeah. So, are you are you are you using the magic of the ma the magic of this while you're, while at work to shop? Uh, doing straight it off the office computer. Oh, you're actually you're <laughs> there. You old. go. That's bold, sir. <laughs> Time That's well bold. spent. <laughs> the IT department like is like watching you. You're like, Jack, mm. I'm streaming from the office computer right now. <laughs> ah, but you're you on are your a internet. rebel. It's a little different. <laughs> <laughs> I smuggle it home once every two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you rebel! You renegade. <laughs> The roguish gentleman adventurer. Who would have thunk? Who would have thunk? Facts: <laughs> stealing company property and using it for personal gain. I'm not stealing it. I bring it back. Borrowed. <laughs> That's okay. Commandeer. Not a clue. <laughs> but, you seconded it to your home environment. It's okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> thank the gods for Amazon wish lists, though. Yes. Uh, it's helpful. They have been a 
lifesaver for me for the last decade. Oh, decade at this point. Yeah. <laughs> It used to I be you write things, it down on legal up, like, pads. And they then, show like, up the next day at Google Pads. At my my family and friends' house, and they think I'm really thoughtful. <laughs> Even though you just remembered it and suddenly ordered it, and cool. Amazon dropped it off. They'll put it in a fancy bag and everything. It's great. Wow, oh, bags are absolutely really nice. I like Jeff bags. Bezos fan, but I I gotta admit this is really. The convenience really? is where you get sucked in. Yeah, <laughs> that's where they hook you. <laughs> it, it is convenient. Now, I, mean, I will admit to lately, I've been actually looking for certain items and I look on Amazon. I'm like, that seems a little expensive. And then I'll go search exactly the same thing and I find it on Etsy. And it's the same maker. It literally is. And so I'm like, yeah, I'll buy it here. I'd rather yeah. pay, well, buy it on Etsy yeah. anytime. But I don't do that every time. And a lot of the, t- all the stuff I want is massive you know, produced stuff anyway. Yeah. I mean, unless I'm looking for steam chest, then I'm always looking for the micro, the, the micro chasm of, of the, the, the maker. The small the, batch. Yeah. I'm like, tell you what, I need a, ma- I need a batch of this stuff. I'm not paying Amazon prices for it. Um, let's cut a deal. I want to make sure you're still paid. So uh, that's even been hard this year. There is like, nothing or they're out like out of stock out of stock out of stock out of stock they just don't have the materials to make the stuff we need anymore right now yeah the supply chain's affecting things in really weird ways things that you wouldn't think would have would be gone from shelves or just inexplicably just like, gone we don't make these things in the united states we, we ship toothpicks what seriously i i get i take dramamine nausea because i get sick a lot and mm-hmm. that's gone i cannot get dramamine nausea anywhere and my makeup sponges that I use, gone. Nobody has them. Walgreen is com- Walgreens is out. And that oh, is the little, little circular ones with like one hard flat. They're like on. they're like little uh, latex wedges. Oh, okay. Just white, okay. and I just pull one off out of the pack and use it and throw it away, and they're gone. Like just not available anywhere. So the weirdest things are popping up as unavailable, and it's this has been going on for months. Yeah. So yeah, it's. You don't know where it's gonna hit, so I can't find my 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 certain scented personal wipes. <laughs> <laughs> Those are important. They, they are really you. are. Desperately and you kind of important. have like it, they're hard to find in Scotch flavored, so you know. The, I didn't know they came flavored. I I, I don't didn't think I wanted to ask. <laughs> Maybe that's where. I, maybe it's the same place I get my my hobo hooch from. I don't know how to check. Weird times, man. Weird times. Don't don't ask questions. <laughs> we all know better now. I have so many questions. <laughs> I have so many questions that I do not want the answers to. <laughs> Tune in on our New Year's stream for all the questions. All the questions will be answered. Actually, when are we going to be streaming next? Uh, uh, I think it's the twenty eighth. So 28th? right between Christmas and New Year's. Yeah, the twenty eighth. <laughs> okay. I go back on the 28th. So I might be here for that. Hopefully I'm back. Hopefully I'm here in front time for that one. I might be traveling. So I might be, I might be in the car for that one. So we need to find someone to No plastic boxes that go in the wall. So, so uh, electrical box. Oh yeah. The little blue things with the nail holes and you stick them in yeah. and you can actually put the wiring couple. See yeah. everything. Weird things are just gone. It just depends on what they're, you know, I don't know. How is that gone? How is that possible? How are make it? How is Jeremy yeah. nausea gone? That's what I'm saying. It's made the, in it's China. The, yeah, it's the, yeah, it's the stuff that has to make its way here. It's very yep. strange. It's amazing how global our economy is. The re- one day I remember when a hurricane, I guess a typhoon, hit the Sumatra Islands and basically coffee. killed entire crops of my particular coffee I liked at yep. the time. My brother and I were very off put realizing that we do that even though we have this massive industry around the globe, we're still very much dealing with localized events that can mess with our global supply chain. And yep. uh, like we were off put for weeks because we were uncaffeinated and it sucked. We had to be caffeinated with like Folgers or something. This was this was before this is the before times when we you know, when things were hard to still get that was new. So Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you never Freak. know where it's going to hit. So, you know. Yeah. Rita, I got to tell you, in Austin, I can get those electrical boxes at Home Depot. They're showing available right now. <laughs> uh, so, 
I mean, if you can't get them at your local Home Depot, you can order them and they'll deliver. Or you can go to an abandoned building in the middle of a project. Because that's, I hate being in the middle of a project and can't get a thing. Yes, I ordered something from eBay on a project, a little like uh, lamp with a little bendable twisty uh, thing. Twisty thing. I, I ordered it, waited. They, they told me it would do, take extra time because of delays in shipping. When I got it, it was a it was a humidifier. I'm like, that is not what I ordered. And why would I want a humidifier in Austin ever? <laughs> okay, I mean, just open a window. <laughs> okay, I mean, I can imagine mixing one similar thing for another, but you ordered an apple and you got an orange. Sometimes I mean, what it is sure is the just... item you are ordering does not exist, and they have to ship something to keep your money. And or they ship something, then they can similar. close out the item. They yeah, or the few numbers were similar, and some, yeah. the, there was a mistake in the system. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. So buying time. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, yeah. In the, yeah. In the, the middle empty of a shelves project, is weird. Can't, can't move forward. Yeah, yeah the empty the particular sh- thing. Yeah. Well, even Target, going grocery shopping at Target, the things that aren't on the shelves versus the things that are, it's just... Uh, we ha- oh, Diet Dr. Pepper, because Matt drinks it like it's his lifeblood. And we're having trouble finding that. Apparently, diet sodas... I didn't read the article, but there's a problem with diet sodas now, I assume because of the sweeteners, about getting those. Yeah. Huh. We yeah. might always be drinking White Claw by this next time you're... This next year. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's left? Seltzer? <laughs> Hard seltzer. We're all going to turn into seltzer I mean, bros. <laughs> right, just squeeze that hobo sock in there a little bit. Give us some flavor. <laughs> oh, pass. Pour some tea in it. <laughs> Diuretic tea will be great with the white cloth. <laughs> if I, honestly, if there was a benefit to this, yeah, I don't know if there's a bit like getting getting hot. Uh, anyway, <sighs> it's just frustrating tea. That's what it is. It's frustrating tea. Honestly, my, I'm my surprised mouth you haven't numb. felt the effects already. My mouth is numb, <laughs> very numb. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. Give it time. It's gonna kick in all of a sudden. <laughs> right before bed, hopefully. I don't. I don't need it like three in the morning. It'd, it'd be terrible. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> the end of the year is coming, and everybody is losing their mind. I know, I know. <sighs> Here's for 2022, though. You know what? At this point, I feel like you're gonna jinx it if you start. Yeah, you know, don't. 2022, knock yay! On some, knock on some wood or something, man. It's. I'm not. I'm still in Jewish. February of 2020 at this point. <laughs> I, I haven't really caught up from. Yeah, I, I, I remember the first weeks of shutdown being pretty traumatizing. I came back from a conference in Albuquerque and everything shut down. <laughs> it's just the last day by day with, ever since. Yeah, the last movie I went to a theater for before Dune, which came out recently, was was Sonic the Hedgehog, which came out, which we closed a week after we saw it. So like that was like it was good. I loved it. It's a great movie. It's funny. I forgot that movie even came out. Yeah. Yeah. That was it's it's really worth it actually. If you know any if you know even like this much about Sonic, it's actually fun. So well, we're trying to decide if we're gonna go see the Matrix in the theater or just stream it when it comes out. So I have to see it. I mean I'm probably going to find a way to go see it. I'm just not yeah. gonna see it during like prime days and i'm probably gonna go to an AMC yeah because at least they like i know the the pr- procedures they go through for uh, sterilization okay. of their chairs and whatnot so i'm and they they have all like hempa filters and they the way they do airflow they when all this came down the first thing they did was hire an institute to come in and like how do we make this safe and they gave them a long laundry list and they've checked down the ways i feel okay. fairly safe in them i didn't uh, know that yeah, and plus I'm also going like in off times, like either mornings, afternoons, just odd, oddball times, not evenings, and uh, yeah. So I, I want to see the Matrix in theaters because 
the only one I had. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw the first one in theaters, and just like this mm -hmm. is kind of like the 2000s is happening again. A game, <clears throat> Homeworld Three, is coming out, which Homeworld One came out in 2000. Um, Dune 2000 came out in 2000. We had a Dune movie that came out. Um, the mate, you know, well, the Matrix is now coming out, and there was back in 2000. It's like too many things. It's like it, it, we now live in the nostalgia of my generation. Yep, it is literally here now. Yeah, and no new, no new, new ideas. Just replaying the Age of Empires ones. Four. I mean, <laughs> Age of Empires Two came out in that time too. Ah, it's the year. Yeah, of the generation. Matt, of Matt brought up the Australia wildfires. Y'all remember that from last year? Oh yeah. Or did that going? get overrun by everything else? Because so much happened last year. There was the hornets, the murder hornets, the coke bores. Was... The best videos I've seen on YouTube about like explaining the month to month thing of COVID <laughs> is Julie Nolke. Uh, it's basically she sits down and there's this girl in front of her and it's her. Yes. And she's like, I'm you from like a month from now. Yeah, Matt. And she's like, well, give me some news. And she's like, well, what do you want to know? It's like, well, are the wildfires still going? Oh, oh, right. I forgot about those. We've had so much happen since then. <laughs> and then and then the second movie is like the young character, the, the, the first character get up and walks out. And another one walks in and sits down. And it's the one from the next month. So it's the one that was, it's the future one talking to the more future one and telling yeah. her like herself, like, oh, what's going on? Well, here's what's going on now. Like the character keeps like looking more and more and more to a bedraggled. <laughs> They are freaking hilarious. Yeah, oh. yeah. I uh, I always wanted to see, and I would never have been done. But the the guy from Ant Man uh, was it Luis from Ant Man, his friend, oh, yeah. who always oh, yeah. does the stories. I wanted to see him do a breakdown of twenty twenty because that would have been perfect. <laughs> well, there is the meme where they're doing that, and it's funny because I can read it in his in his 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 his, his verbiage, <laughs> and it's just it just makes me crack up every time. <laughs> Weird man. <laughs> Good lord. I wonder if he's <sighs> on that program where you could hire him for like a hundred bucks to do oh, it. Oh, cameo? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. So it's speaking of cameo, my brother's actually looking into getting some voice acting. And it's funny because he's got this really deep voice that goes on. He's like six foot four and like buff, and I'm the, the weakling of the family. But um and so he's like do, he's made a little bit of money doing like people's uh, like cell phone, uh, like you've reached this person's phone number, and he does it with almost like a James Earl Jones voice. I'm like, you get paid for that? How do I get paid for that? Why can't I get paid for that? No one wants to hear my voice, apparently. Oh no! <laughs> Judging by the, the amount of subs I have on my YouTube channel, it proves a point. Anyway, there's I'm done with deprecating humor. Now we can move on. Okay, feel better now. <laughs> I, I do. I got it off my chest. <laughs> feel bad for me. Go go to my YouTube channel. <laughs> I will get right on that. <laughs> well, we have reached about about an hour uh, mm -hmm. of this show that you have wasted with us again. <laughs> Listening and to so, my books. Uh, I guess we need to wind this thing up. Uh, we want to thank, of course, our Patreons. Uh, Rita and Lawrence, who have been watching this show and making comments with us. We love that. Uh, Kitty, Jenny and Ryan Shaver, and the Dowager, Dowager Duchess Claire Bear. want to thank you guys all for, for helping us uh, pay to keep this, this show on and uh, you know, hosting the, the, uh, the back issues so people can listen in. Oh, Kitty's here. <laughs> Silence, but here. Thank you for sh showing up and putting up with us. Uh, of course. Putting up is the right word. <laughs> <laughs> you can find us on Facebook at Texas Steampunk Connection. You're probably watching us right now, but if you're listening later, we're on Facebook. You can email us at uh, Texas Steampunk Connection at gmail.com. Uh, if you're looking for our podcast, it's Texas Steampunk Connection. That dot podbean.com or we're at uh, iTunes and anywhere else you find podcasts and uh, of late we're on Twitter at TX stream connect one um, so I'm paying a little more attention over there 
We I'm usually looking. suggest you put your comments in the uh, uh, Facebook feed. That's the best way to reach us. But lately, I've been having trouble. Facebook is trying to give me too much information on the screen at once. <laughs> I can't even see the comments anymore, which is a real nuisance. Uh, so but... email him directly at. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'll do my best. Those are great places to reach us. Um, we want to uh, say music has been provided by zapsplat.com. Required to say. Okay. Um, is there anything else uh, we want to say before the Christmas holiday comes up? Um, I was going to say, they can also get me on Twitter if they want. It's just Clockwork Heart. Literally Clockwork Heart on Twitter. Nice. So, right. yeah, I try to I try to share everything from the the main account when I can. So I just I forget sometimes. But yeah, if you have any questions, you can also Twitter at me because I spend too much time on there. <laughs> if you find yourself on the YouTube side of things, you can go to Steam Chest, which I'm also I am meticulously going through our library and posting these videos as well for a library of some type. And uh, I am woefully behind, but that means you can catch up on Christmas this year right now from last year. <laughs> but uh Steam Chest is a great place to buy yourself a Christmas present. Oh, well, there's that too. Uh, yes. Or a present every month, if you like. Or and a I present do. for someone else. <laughs> <laughs> for it's your mortal enemy. You know, presents you don't know for everyone. <laughs> you don't know what you're going to get. It's a mystery. It's, it what's, it's, it's more Christmassy that way. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I do enjoy doing it. I really do. It, even if in the hard times like this, the fact that I'm still able to do it is... Uh, Basically, I have to thank all of my makers for making it possible for me to even exist as a small business and uh, local as well. So thank you all. And I know a lot of you who are my subscribers have to put up with a little bit of time delays, but I swear we're doing great. We're doing good. I got it planned. And uh, y'all are all going to enjoy the next couple of things we've got coming. Awesome. All right. Sweet. Well, Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays or whatever you're doing out there. Happy Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa. Happy Yule. Absolutely. <laughs> and until next time, mind your gauges. Mind your gauges. <laughs>